How many were at breakfast? You don't know it, but when you go out that front door, that mat, there's a scale under that. Today it malfunctioned. Well, no, I mean when you go out. Wonderful breakfast. The teens were the sponsors. The youth group were the sponsors of that. They did a fabulous job. So you didn't eat anything. That's none of your business. I'll do what I want. Here are two problems with that. When you eat, you can't talk as much. 
The other problem is, you're not preaching today. I am, and you don't want to hear me burp. Sorry. Tell it like it is. Or food will come out, or I'll have something stuck in my teeth, and you'll all be laughing at me and won't tell me. So just drink coffee. Glad you came. Glad you ate. Glad you made an effort to get up extra early, some of you. Some of you didn't, but that's okay. We missed you, maybe. There was plenty of food left over, I think. So we're glad that you came. Ready to pray? Father, today is the day you made. Yes, 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 yes. We call it Easter, but I celebrated Easter yesterday, and I celebrated Easter last week, and the month before, and every day to me, is rejoicing in the fact that Jesus came and died and rose from the dead and has given me hope and given me eternal life. And what a message. Thank you for the message. And we don't minimize this day. We just want to exalt it every day. So speak to our hearts. And uh, God, you, use your word in our lives. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can be seated. We're going to take it just a moment here because this week is Dave and Candy's 50th wedding anniversary. So let's sing happy anniversary to Dave and Candy. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Dave and Candy. Happy anniversary to you. 149 in your hymnals because... He lives. 149. God's no choir today is there there's no choir it's a holiday there there's no choir we're having church tonight I don't know what you think you should do on Easter but if it's eating or whatever you okay you're gonna leave but God convicted your heart <laughs> she smelled bacon we'll be here tonight because that's what you do so 6 o'clock tonight, we'd love to have you make it. We're not inviting you. We're just 
challenging you that it, I think it's funny. Let me let me just say this and Easter, bless God. I'm the, hey, amen. Should be in his house. Well, I didn't find any verse in the Bible about going to church at night. No, if you want a verse on the, in the Bible about going to church, they went every day. So we're letting you off the hook. So you come Wednesdays and Sundays, and that's good. And if you want to argue about what the Bible says, we'll start having it every day. No, I drive up, rub up. Tomorrow, dingus day. <laughs> dingus day. <laughs> Sausage. Go back to eating meat. Whatever. 8.30 tomorrow morning, if you are interested in going to the jail service for the men, you can see John Berkey. We are having our midweek service on Wednesday at 7. Youth group meets in the next building, over separated from us, the youth building. King's Kids meets in the big part. Thursday, there's a jail service, 8.30 for the women. And then Miller's Mary Manor next week. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I don't like not doing it. We will not be here next week. We are, uh, I just need to sleep in. My pastor is celebrating, Pastor Jones, is celebrating his 80th birthday. His son called me and begged me. He knows I won't do this. He said, it's dad's 80th. You've known him more than half of his life. He said, you need to show up and surprise dad and preach. He said, he thinks I'm preaching, but you show up. And I said, okay, we'll be there. So we won't be here next week. We'll be with the Joneses, and we love them. And, and once you turn 80, you could go at any time. You're not or young, I'm not candidate. I don't want to go to Wisconsin. If a church called me from the south, I'm in. I'll, I've already prayed about it. I'm going for my pastor. I wouldn't do it. I don't do it. He knows that. He doesn't ask me. Ken doesn't, but Ken said they want to have a big party. He's Pastor Jones has been there 40 years in that church. And uh, they're celebrating having a dinner. And then we're going to, the next day, actually a week from tomorrow is his birthday. And so we're going to then stay and spend the day. We don't see him enough. So we will be gone. But Miller's Mary Manor, some of you are like, yeah, yeah. Miller's Mary Manor. Afterglow, this is next week. It's in your bulletin. Mother-daughter banquet coming the 10th. Portage Manor on the 12th, the 20th. Baby shower for Brittany Fish. She is registered at? Target. So put that in there. That's why it's blank. So you can fill in. She's registered at? What's that? K-Bar Ranch or whatever. Elbar. Elbar Ranch. She should be registered there. Target and Amazon? <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> How many of you use Amazon or ever have? I'm looking for, if you find them, let me know. I'm looking for Oreo put out for a while. You know, they have Oreos. Then they have thin Oreos, which that's a sin. <laughs> then they have um, double stuff. Then they have mega stuff. Well, they came out with one called more stuff. And it was like three or four Oreos. I can't find them. I missed them when they were out. You can get them on Amazon, though. They're $28 a pack. I am not that committed <laughs> or that stupid. But if you see them somewhere, buy me a pack. I'll give you 20 bucks. The Gingriches need a tiller for the campus house if anyone has one they don't need. If you want to get rid of your tiller so you don't have to use it, you could donate to the campus. Go there. I can't till my. If you have one, maybe you know of one, you could let them know. Let maybe John Berkey know. Check the directory. We're going to give you another week. If the information in the directory on the back table, we're going to print the directory. If that information is correct, leave it. If something's different, Change it if you don't want to be in there. Change it if you want to add uh, email or something. 
please, please, please do that. We want that to be as accurate as it can be. We're glad you're here. The ushers are going to come. You don't get to heaven because you give God money. You get to heaven because you give him your heart. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Got to believe that. Doesn't come because you go to church. Doesn't come because you give money. Doesn't come by any work, not by works of righteousness. Nobody ever said to me, you know what? I'm just being as bad as I can, hoping that counts. You know that doesn't count. So anybody doing something good, they're the ones always saying, you know, I'm doing that because I'm trying to get in. That, that doesn't. Some of, I gave up on that. I tried that for a couple minutes. I gave up on that. So I just realized I turned to him. I let him save me. I believe he died for my sins, paid for my sins. And by the way, it's very, very cheap. If you don't live for him. I think it goes without saying. That if you turn to him. To save you. And when he comes in he changes you. And you realize. That your sin can't get you anywhere but hell. So you trust him. And you take him as your savior. I'm glad that happened to me. I'm glad my mother-in-law. Witnessed to me. I'm glad my mother-in-law prayed for me. Glad my mother-in-law. Gave me a bible. And I could see the truth from the Bible that Jesus died for me and rose from the dead for me. It's Easter every day when you're a Christian. He's alive every day. That, and you can only get black jelly beans at Easter, so I'm thankful for Easter. I got a bag of black jelly beans today. And uh, they're kind of hard because they don't make them every year because nobody likes them. But I put them in the microwave, a little bowl of them, five seconds. And then they kind of warm up. Just giving you household hints. <laughs> I want to feed your soul, but I want to help you. You can do that. We used to get these old, uh, what were they called, pixies? Turtles, turtle, caramel, pecans, chocolate. And when they're old, if you squish them and they don't squish, they're old. So you put them in the microwave for a couple of seconds. They melt in your mouth. How's that? That help you? Blessed day. I'll do what I can to, to help your soul in a little bit. But for now, got your body covered. We're going to pray. Help us, Lord. Show us how to praise you. Show us how to glorify you. Show us how to enjoy you. Thank you, God, that your word is true. Thank you that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Thank you for this day. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
page 152 in your hymnals, Christ Arose. 152. Let's all stand on the first verse in your church or primary church. You may be dismissed. saying.
you and for me. But he stayed on the cross for you and for me. If you make that up, did you write that for today? I've never heard that. Luke 24, find that. Let me talk to you a minute before we start. You should know the name. We've prayed for her Annie Long. Annie Long. Her and her husband Frank, she has cancer. She is expecting a baby. She was admitted to the hospital this week. We found out last night one of her kidneys has shut down. They just got saved. They're going through a lot. The devil's trying to knock them down. So would you take some extra time? I'm going to take time right now. If we're not praying, we're wasting our time. So you, you pray about that. There's other things I know, I know, but... Annie Long. Annie Long. Already struggling with a the cancer. They don't know what to do because of the baby. And now she got, I think, Amy, was it an infection? And something happened where it shut her kidney down. Some of you that were so bloated from breakfast, you feel a little bit better now, don't you? Pray with me. Ready? Let's pray. Dear Father, please be with Annie. Be with the doctors. They need to do, God, exactly what she needs. So help them, guide them. But we need you to do what only you can do. We're asking for that. Strengthen Frank. Give him faith. Give Annie faith. They need to see you in this. God, you were there to save them. You're still there. Help them through this. Give her healing, would you? Lord, that's our prayer. You said pray. So that's what we're asking. You said if we could believe and ask you, you'd do it. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're believing that you can give her healing in her body. You can take the cancer away. You can keep the baby safe. You can cause that kidney to function. Please do that, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 24, I try not to preach from this text because it's more, not the whole chapter, a lot of it is, kind of an Easter thing, and I never know what to say on Easter. You know about the resurrection. and So I have to pray and read and try to come up with something that will be a help and a blessing to you. And It's not about, I, I think, it, look, I, I'm all for doctrine. I'm all for getting the story straight. I'm all... For you saying, that's what it said. But, but listen to me. If it doesn't do anything to the way we live, what difference does it matter what we believe? Amen. So we need to live it. We need to get it, and then we need to say, all right, what, what can I do with that? You've got to do something with it. You can't just say, man, that's great. And then I needed, you've never done this, I needed a major prop for this message, and I forgot it. So I don't know how this is going to go off. But obviously, uh, I had to get up earlier, and I had to come to breakfast, and it threw me off. I, Amy, I said in the car. I, did I not? Have I got everything? Everything but what I needed. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know Jeremy was going to go out and try to steal one. My pastor, one, one morning, preached on, oh, it was a message about getting caught up in the world and, and, and letting the TV influence you and alcohol and cigarettes. So he came over to church before, real early. We all were up early. And we slept at the church while all our kids went. And we slept in the basement of the church. And we worked on Saturday and then Sunday, we were there, and he came over one Sunday morning. He said, hey, I'm preaching this morning. I need you to go do something for me. I said, what do you need? He said, I need you to walk up and down the street. This is Milwaukee. I need you to walk up and down the streets. I need to, you to find me every cigarette butt, 
in every beer can and beer bottle you can get. I said, you're not serious. He said, I'm serious. He was older then. I think he was 39 or 40. And so I thought, he's an old man. I need to, really, this is the truth. And I was in my 20s. And I said, all right. I grabbed a bag. I told Amy, I'll be back, hopefully. And I'm walking up down the streets of Milwaukee looking for cigarette butts. And I'm trying to get something I think is a cigarette butt. It wasn't. Stop. I'm looking for beer cans. And beer. This is Milwaukee. You know, I didn't find one cigarette butt. I found plenty. I had a bag full of beer bottles. I got back, he said, how'd you do? He said, man. I said, I didn't know how many you needed. He was going to break them, you know, make a big deal. Imagine that. He goes, what about cigarette, cigarette butts? I said, I couldn't, preacher, I couldn't find one cigarette butt. He, he got in his wallet, he gave me two bucks, he said, go buy a pack of cigarettes. I said, you're not serious. He said, I need the cigarettes for the sermon. You're not going to smoke them. God knows. Go get the cigarettes. I walk into place. Been a while. Not that long. All I knew was Marlboro. So I walk in. The lady says, can I help you? I said, I need a pack of cigarettes. I'm thinking, thank God that college is 60 miles away. Because I'm in Bible college. I'm in this dump mini-mart, the closest one to us, and I'm buying cigarettes. She goes, well, what kind? I said, I don't know. She said, what do you mean you don't know? She said, do you smoke? I said, no, I don't smoke. She said, well, what are you buying them for? I said, I've been walking up down the street for an hour looking for a cigarette butt. I thought she should hear it all. She goes, Why? I said, because my pastor wants a cigarette. <laughs> she said, does he smoke? I said, no. He's going to use it in his sermon. She said, well, what do you want? I said, I don't know. She said, I think I have this cigarette for you. I said, what's that? She said, they're called Eve. <laughs> this is a true story. I said, I'll take them. I bought them, wrapped them up, stuffed them in my coat, ran back to church. He goes, how'd you do? I said, I got the perfect cigarette. He goes, what'd you get? You know, he's thinking Pall Mall, Camel, Marlboro. Huh? My mom used to smoke Chesterfields. Remember those? No filter. He goes, what'd you get? I said, they're called, uh, he, he hadn't smoked for years, I hadn't smoked. I said, they're called Eve. He said, perfect. <laughs> Luke 24. Verse 13. Behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. They talked together of all these things which it had happened. They mocked him. They beat him. Talking about Jesus. They ridiculed him. They nailed him to a cross. Hey, it got real weird when he died. It got dark. Listen to me. The Bible says that people came out of their graves and they were walking the streets. When they died, they thought he was just a kook. But as he died, they realized, as they said, truly, this was the Son of God. So these two men, Luke 24, on the Emmaus Road, and they talk together of all, verse 14, of all those things which had happened. And it came to pass while they 
communed together, verse 15, and reasoned. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16, but their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Don't you hate that? Does it happen to you? People come up to you. They go, remember me? And you go, yeah. And then they go, what's my name? And you go, yeah. And they say, you don't remember me, do you? And I go, I remember you, but I don't remember what to call you. But you remember me. I'm sorry. They tell me their name and they tell me the connection. And I say, oh, yeah. I've had people come up to me and they'll go, I've been watching you. I don't know if you saw me, but I've been watching you. I go, really, why? Because I know who you were. I know you're a pastor. And I just wanted to see how you act. Live with that. I already told the story about having to drive right. Amy bought me a plate that says veto, so now I can't drive like I want to. I have to drive nice. People are behind me. They go, hey, I was behind you. Well, how would you know it was me? It was your plate. Oh, yeah. Jesus is walking with them. They don't know it's him. What are they talking about? Him. What are they talking about? All the commotion that he's created. He said, they don't know it's him. They don't know it's him. They don't know it's him. He said, verse 17, what manner? What manner of communication? He could tell. You, you talk to someone and they sound like it. You go, hey, how you doing? They go, well, I'm okay. Did they say they're okay? Stay with me. Stay with me. Did they say they're okay? Are they? You can tell by their manner. So Jesus says, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk? And then he throws it out and are sad. Something's wrong. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? If they would have known it was Jesus, they would have never talked that way. It's funny when you don't think the Lord's looking, the things you'll do. It's funny when you don't think he's around, how you'll act. Hello? Guilty? Guilty? I didn't know you were watching. I didn't know you'd see me. I saw you. Somebody said, I saw you. What did you see? I mean, I want to know. I want them to describe it. Make sure I wouldn't do anything. I have some bad habits. Not smoking. Don't get off on this and write it all down. I have to think. What, what, what? What do we say? How does it come across? They said, how can you not know? Isn't that funny? He knows everything. He knew it before it happened and they're saying to him, how can you not know? Wouldn't it be hard to stifle yourself? He said unto them, verse 19, I love this. <laughs> what thing? Did he know? Was he lying? He's just drawing. He's trying to get information. They said, man, how could you not? Everybody knows. How can you not keep up? All these things are happening. He said, tell me what things. Tell me. They said concerning Jesus of Nazareth, verse 19, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him, verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today's the third day. Since these things were done, yea, certain women, verse 22, 
Also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Certain of them, verse 24, certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, found it even so as the woman had said, but him they found not. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Man, these guys knew everything that they needed to know. They were on top of it. Look, what, what? They had all the doctrine. But he was right with them, and they missed that. I'm sorry. I'm going to ruin your day, but I'm going to say it. There are people in this room that know all the right doctrine. He's not with you. So you get mad at him. Your life becomes boring and stale. Becomes ritualistic and routine and formal and mechanical. They're complaining. Watch. They're complaining about him. They think. They think. He's dead. I'm all. I'm all for learning. I'm all for doctrine. I'm more for doctrine than you think or you know. But I'm more for, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm more for the Spirit. Because my Bible says the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. I'm all, I'm all for experience. I don't want to know what the Bible says about God only. I want to know I don't want to just read about him. Now, I can read history and I can read about George Washington. I can read about Abraham Lincoln and I can read about great men of the past, but I can't know them. But I can know Jesus. Then he said unto them, now remember, now remember, they haven't said anything wrong. They will, if you will, they quoted Scripture accurately. How does he respond? This is interesting. Look at it. Verse 25. Then he said to them, O oh, fool. Wow. Look at me. Look at me. Is he calling them fools because they didn't know what they're talking about? He called them fools because they didn't have an experience with him. Watch, look, 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 look. They knew everything up here. Did he say he's going to rise from the dead? You can believe him. Did he say Peter would deny him? Did Peter think he would? He said, no way, none of us will. Then they all left. Did that happen? Did Peter deny? Did it happen just as Jesus said? No, we believe that. But see, they didn't have a relationship. With him. How did Abraham know when God said, I want Isaac? How did Abraham know that was God? Because he knew God. He didn't just hear his word, he had a relationship. People have said, Oh, your pastor said, someone will go, I know my pastor, he would never say that. See, there's a difference in you quoting something and knowing the reality of it. He said, verse 25, Oh, fool. And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, verse 27, beginning of Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. Verse 29, key verse, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. For it's toward evening, the days far spent. He went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave to them, verse 31, and their eyes were opened. Why? Because they were with him. Read your Bible, but don't read your Bible to fill your head. Read your Bible so you can have an experience with God. Know him. Quoting Scripture, the Pharisees quoted Scripture. 
There are lost people all over the place. They memorize, quote scripture. Their eyes, verse 31, their eyes were open and they knew him. He never said, it's me. He just said, you guys say you know the scripture. Oh, fool, you say you know the scripture, but it hasn't done anything for you, hasn't affected your walk, hasn't affected the outcome. Our lives, our lives rejoice because of what Jesus said, what he did, and how we know him. They said one to another. Verse 31 says, they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Verse 32, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures and they rose up the same hour, returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together. Them that were with them, verse 34, saying, the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon and they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them. And breaking of bread. Pray with me. Father, please, in these moments, change our life. Speak to us. We're going to hear Scripture. Someone's going to get the idea that they need to make sure the Scripture's correct. It doesn't have to be correct. It just has to be your Scripture. And here it is. So as we read it, God just used that in our life. We're, we're too, we're too uh, 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 formal and we... Like them, we miss Jesus. I don't want to miss Jesus today. Don't let me miss Jesus, please, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We can get mechanical how we live for Christ. Watch me, this is you. I'm in church. I'm faithful. I read my Bible. I tithe. You've got this whole list of things you do, but if it hasn't done anything for your life, what's the point? Our Christian life has become mainly mental. Remember what these disciples said? They didn't say, man, was that a mental rush, what they say. Did not our heart, hey, did not our heart burn? If the Scriptures aren't doing anything to your heart, it's not the Scripture, it's you. Scripture ought to do something to your heart. I want a God, I want a God that makes His Word speak to me. I want a Lord that will lead me. You ought to be faithful. You ought to be in church. I want to be faithful, but I don't want to depend on God just when I need God. I want to depend on God when I don't need God. I want it to be a part of my life. I want it to be a lifestyle. Jesus wants to affect every day that we live. Here's where the prop is supposed to be. This is going to, this is going to dive. I promise when I'm done, I'll cackle like a chicken having an egg. Because that's what I'm about to do is lay. Can't do this without what I'm going to try to do. I, listen to me, I love apples. I went to the farmer's market yesterday. I go to the farmer's market to buy one thing, honey. Honey from the hood. Unity Gardens, it's the best. It, it's just the best. So I, And the place is packed. I go later in the afternoon. I think nobody's going to be there. They're parked on the streets. I'm walking through the market. I find the honey. I go, has it been like this all day? She said, all day. I said, I just need two bottles of honey, and I'm out of here. I took a lap. I found apples. My favorite apple is a John of Gold. It is a breed of a Jonathan and a Golden Delicious. And they're very soft. They're very sweet. I said, I need that big basket of John of Gold. I, I paid him. I took off all night, all morning. I'm saying, grab an apple. You need an apple for the sermon. Grab an apple. Ta-da!
You can study, watch me now, you can study all about apples. I think most of you, if not all of you, have had an apple. Ask Amy. I'll have an, at least, at least an apple a day. Why? Because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So I'll, I've got a special corer. I'll core it, eat it like that. Sometimes I just like to dig into it. Juice dripping all over. And I was going to do that in front of you. Maybe God didn't want me to. People will say, try this one. I'll say, what is it? A gala. Oh, I like them. They're okay. Oh, try this one. Red Delicious. Too hard for me. I, they're not that great. Gold Delicious, yeah. Those are awfully hard. They have to be ripe. They're too green. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. Do you know why I like apples? I've tasted them. Can you bear with me for a couple minutes? An apple is a sweet, edible fruit produced by an apple tree, Malus pumila. Keep, keep, keep track now. You're gonna, I'm going to quit you. The apple tree originated in Central Asia where its wild ancestor, Malus siversi, is still found today. Malus siversi. Write that down. Apples have been grown for thousands of years in Asia and Europe and were brought to North America by European colonists. Apple trees are large and grown from the seed. Trees and fruit are prone to a number of fungal, bacterial, and pest problems, which can be controlled by a number of organic and not organic means. Worldwide production of apples in 2017 was 83.1 million tons, with China leading the way with 49.8% of the total tonnage. The apple is a delicious tree, generally standing 6 to 15 feet tall and cultivation up to 30 feet in the wild. When cultivated, the size, shape, and branch density are determined by root stock selection and trimming method. The leaves are alternately arranged, dark green colored simple ovals with serrated margins and a slightly downy underside. Are you, are you paying attention? I'm talking about an apple. Commercial growers aim to produce an apple that's two and three quarter inches to three and a quarter inch in diameter due to market preference. Some consumers, especially those in Japan, prefer a larger apple, while apples below two and a quarter inch are generally used for making juice and have little fresh market value. The skin of ripe apples is generally red, yellow, green, pink, or russeted. Apples were introduced in North America by colonists in the 17th century. The first apple orchard on the North American continent was planted in Boston by Reverend William Blackston in 1625. The only apples native to North America are crab apples, which were once called common apples. Till the 20th century, farmers stored apples in frost-proof cellars during the winter for their own use or for sale. Improved transportation of fresh apples by train and road replaced the necessity for storage. Controlled atmosphere facilities are used to keep apples fresh year-round. Controlled atmosphere, controlled atmosphere facilities use high humidity, low oxygen, and controlled carbon dioxide levels to main fruit freshness. They were first used in the United States in the 1960s. All of what I've just read to you is absolutely true. You'll find nothing wrong or false. These are facts. They're kind of boring. I don't care how many they sold. I don't care what size they are. I don't care how tall the tree gets. I don't care how they preserve them with carbon dioxide in a controlled atmosphere. The Bible says this, Psalm 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It doesn't say, oh, study and see that the Lord is good. It says, oh, taste. We live in a world where the world is real. The sin in our world is real. And this world and, and the culture and the evil squeezes God out. And we can't see God. It's like he's hidden. And often 
Christians wrestle with this world because the world is there. You can touch it. It's tangible. You can see it, but God, you can't. You have to taste Him spiritually. You have to taste Him uh, mentally. You can't live the Christian life just on facts. The Bible says, and I'm all for that. You know that. The Bible says, the Bible says, When Jesus was with the disciples, they had Jesus. They didn't have just doctrine, they had Him. That's what makes the difference. A person can read their Bible and they can hold to the letter of the law, but if they've never had a relationship with Him, that's why Jesus said, man, it is so important that I go. And the disciples said, you can't go. That's why he wrote John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. Because he said, I'm leaving. And they said, man, what are we going to do? You're the one that held us together. You're the one that fed people and healed people. And you can't go. He said, no. You see, if I go, I've been with you. But if I go, I'm going to send the Spirit of God to live in you. They didn't understand that until the Holy Spirit came. Listen to me now. Baptists have a horrible habit. We don't emphasize the Holy Spirit. We think people will think we're charismatic or Pentecostal. I've been called worse. God lives in me in the form of the Holy Spirit. When I trusted Jesus Christ, the Bible tells me that my body became the temple of the Spirit of God. I don't minimize that. That's a big thing. When I read His Word, He's in me. He's not just amen and amen, that's good, amen, that's good. He's relating what he wrote to my life. For instance, he'll say, you need that. Read that again, read that again. I'll go, okay, I'll read it again. He'll go, boy, you need, isn't that good? I was sharing stuff with Amy all week. Man, God's just been, just giving me, filling me. Look at it, look at this, isn't it good? And I'll go, look, read, isn't that good? Man, she was even, Wow. That's what, I, that's what I need. We need God. We need what He said. Yes, but we need a burning heart. Paul wrote, Philippians 1 verse 10, listen to what Paul wrote. Paul wrote most of the New Testament. You and I know, we could spend time bragging on Paul. You and I know what kind of person Paul, here's what Paul said, the Apostle Paul. We have the gospel because of the Apostle Paul. Here's what Paul said. Philippians, he wrote to the church of Philippi. He said, chapter 1, verse 10, he said that I may know him. You think Paul knew God? He said, I need to know him more. I need to really know him. He wanted more God, but he didn't want it just by what God gave him to write down. He wanted God by tasting. Notice two quick thoughts. Number one, Jesus, number one, Jesus is alive. Say, so what's that mean? Verse 17 tells us these men are sad. Why? They don't think he's alive. They think that it, he's done, it's over. They must have been around him at some point when he was alive and heard him teach, but now they're living like he isn't alive. They, they, they were being controlled by their emotion. Look at me, look at me. Have you ever felt like you're having a bad day? Why wouldn't you take it to God? And say, God, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Why wouldn't you say, you've got to help me? I need you. They knew the facts about him. 
For several verses, they talked about the things they knew, but they didn't really know Him. You and I can taste God because He left us the Holy Spirit. Don't minimize that. Look, look, look at me. Sounds too spooky to me. Spooky? I'll take all of God I can get. And I got all I can, I can have from Him, and I'm still struggling. Only because I don't live like He's alive. We think getting something done for God is why we're here. God doesn't need us. We come and go. God wants us here so He can have a relationship with us. The Bible calls it fellowship. Fellowship. These men are sad and they're discouraged and Jesus shows up and He found them when they needed Him. They didn't find Him. He found them. God loves us. Grab your Bible. Psalm 119. Oh, you're not going to read the whole thing, are you? Maybe. Psalm 119. I don't know if you've ever done this. You've heard me. I start doing this in the Old Testament. I do it in the New Testament. I read books of the Bible, and I don't want this to sound wrong. We read the Bible, and if we read it a lot, we get too familiar with it. It's still the Bible, though, no matter how you read it. So often I'll go through the Gospels backwards. That doesn't change the order of things. Like, oh, no. Everything's still where it ought to be. It just helps me see it from a different perspective. So I've been trying to do that with the book of Proverbs and the book of Psalms, reading it backwards. Psalm 119, last verse. If you go through the 119th Psalm, a couple of verses, a couple of verses, out of 176 verses, a couple of verses do not mention the Word of God. But every verse in Psalm 119, with the exception of a couple, don't mention the Bible. And then he closes this psalm with this verse. I have gone astray. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. See it? Seek. Seek thy servant. For I do not forget thy commandments. Hey. It's more than the commandments. It's God finding you. That's the Christian life. You don't have to worry about trying to find Him. He wants to find you. Jesus is alive. Number two, here's the bad part. You can miss Him. Did you ever have a bad day? You ended up saying something or doing something you shouldn't? Want to vote? Was Jesus not alive? Did he die for a day? Did he hide? Did he go away? Did he forsake you? No. We miss him. You know, when you, you, you ought to pray. You ought to have a prayer life. Here's most Christians. You pray, yeah. Yeah, I get up, pray, or I pray in a way to work. However you do it, however you do it. I'm not going to start debating with you how you should pray or what, but you, you have this time that you pray. But you know, if you are listening to God, there are going to be times when God is urging you to pray. And let me tell you something, that's God, because the devil's not going to tell you to pray. And when God urges you to pray, you ought to pray. Not just, oh, I have my time of prayer. No. No, you ought to be always one. That time alone, that prayer time, that's the time we really get to know Him. I'm not talking about blabbing off a bunch of stuff that you need to ask Him about. I'm talking about when life beats you up. You're worn out and people disgust you. 
Someone said to me, do you ever get disgusted with people? My response, nice weather we're having. Of course they do. We're all sinners. I've disgusted someone else. So I need someone that can help me, that can pull me through it, that can be real to me, someone I can taste who's always good. Happened to me once. They say, if there's a hole in an apple, that's the worm coming out. Because he is born inside. Sure enough, I bite into an apple. And I got more than apple. Nothing worse. No, the only thing worse than a whole worm is half a worm. I'm thankful God's anywhere. Anywhere I am. I'm thankful that God can help me anytime. Did you ever try to think of a scripture and you couldn't? Man, I'm glad the Holy Spirit's there. He can bring things to remembrance. He can just give you a peace and a calm. You just rely, well, the Bible says, well, the Bible says. Now, I'm all for that. You know that. But I'm talking about something bigger than that. They're talking to him, verse 18. They're talking to him like he doesn't know what's going on. And he's the one waiting for us to open our heart to him. He makes us hungry for the word. But we have to meet with him. I'm not going to mention any names. Some of you... Some of you eat wrong. You don't eat your vegetables. I try to eat broccoli every day. Broccoli is one of the best. I try to eat. You, say, you eat cookies. We're not talking about me. We're talking about you. Some of you don't eat right. How dare you? have horrible eating habits, and then ask me to pray that you have good health. Ain't gonna happen. You need to eat right. You with me? You going with me? You need to eat. My wife's shaking her head. Her and I are going to have a real tussle over this. Says, your wife eat right? Raccoons eat better than she does. She knows. I've told her. We, we don't, you know, I make broccoli. She comes in and passes out from the smell. I don't pray for her health. I pray for her heart to change. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you get it? You can't neglect God and expect to turn out spirit. Your spiritual life is built upon the Word of God and time with God. Knowing God, asking God. Hey, asking God. The writer of Psalm 119, verse 176, he said, Seek thy servant. I've gone astray. I'm going to fail. But come after me. Why don't we pray that way? What's wrong with asking God to come after us? Jesus, verse 29, said, all right, I got to go. He wanted to see how they respond. What they do? They constrained him. It says, they said, abide with us. Don't go. Look at me. Look at me. I, you don't look mad yet, so let me keep trying. Give me a couple minutes. I'm going to try to make you mad. Some of you have time with God, but it's so meaningless. And you think having time with God is what does it. God ought to be speaking to your heart. God ought to be challenging you. He ought to be breaking your heart. 
He ought to be showing you what you have. Listen, every time I'm in the presence of God, I feel worse than I did the day before. So then I say, God, the only way I'm going to make it is if you help me, if you come after me, if you make me what I ought to be. Can I share with you something I'm learning? You know what I'm learning? I'm learning that as you allow God to be real to you, your problems become small. Some of these people fussing about stuff or making a big deal about junk, I, I have two words, grow up. Grow up. There's no reason you and I shouldn't be tasting the Lord. Follow me and I'm done. Stay with me. Stay right with me. It's not I do this. It's not I do that. Because you'll give up if you don't have a heart that burns for God. Can I get spooky for a minute? It's not spooky because it's God. How many of you believe in God? How many of you believe you ought to talk to Him? If your theology is correct, the Bible says there are three that bear witness or agree. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus wasn't less than God the Father because He came. He's still God. Jesus, let me tell you what He said. He said, I and the Father are one. How, how, how do we, why do we shortchange the Holy Spirit? He's not up there. in here. Try this. You meet with God tomorrow, maybe later today. Just say, Holy Spirit. Talk to Him. You like to be ignored? Hey, hey, hey! Somebody ignores you. Doesn't that aggravate you? Hey, I'm right. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to be ignored. You, maybe you could say to him, Holy Spirit, help me to be open to you. Maybe, like me, you need to admit your heart is cold. Because what I'm seeing from this passage is that our hearts should burn when we realize who Jesus is. More than you want him to be real, he wants to be real to you. A real God. But everybody thinks he's alive today. It's Easter! Hey? It's Easter! I get, I, 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 they're telling me, hey, Happy Easter! Not you, but uh, Happy Easter! And I want to go, It was Happy Easter last week. I mean, I don't want to confine it to a day. I need God more than just today. I need Him alive when I'm struggling with something. Is He real to you? Is He just somebody who wrote a book? Does your heart burn? See, my head hurts sometimes when I read the Bible. Me too. That chronicles, I can't figure that one out. Ezekiel. I read Ezekiel and I'm sure my eyes start crossing. I don't have to understand it for him to make my heart burn. I just have to say, it's your word, God. I'm reading your word, please, Holy Spirit. Speak to me. Hey, can I ask you something? Do you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you read His Word? Holy Spirit, please open my mind, open my heart to what I'm about to read. Heavenly Father, it's amazing how our heart can go after so many things. 
people will end up bragging about what they have done for the Lord. But you can't sense, you can't hear anything about tasting that they have tasted that the Lord is good in their own life. For all of us in this room, Lord, who don't live, who don't act like you're alive, you are, the facts are, you are alive. That's the fact. The other fact is we could miss you. I want to be, Lord, so sensitive. I want to be so led by the Holy Spirit that he controls and dominates every move I make, every thought I think, every word I say, everything goes in my head. My eyes, everything that goes in my ears, and everything that goes in my mouth or out of my mouth. I want the Holy Spirit to lead me. I want to taste. I want to taste like biting into an apple. I want to understand it. I want to get it. Not because I know facts about apples, but because I've tasted it. I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. Your head bowed. Your eyes closed. May I ask you, you're not looking around. If you died today, do you know for sure? Are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? Say, well, I'm not sure I know that. Could we show you, if you would let us, would you tell me? And we could take a Bible and show you what the Bible says about going to heaven. We'd love to show you that. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Say, you know what? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. But I'd like to be sure of that. Would you pray for me? I would love to pray for you. I won't call you out. I will, I'll just thank If you raise your hand, I'll thank you. You say, hey, pastor, here's my hand. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to heaven when I die. But I'd like to be sure. I would. Would you pray for me? Could I pray for you? Slip it up. Hi, here's my hand. Just slip it up. Hey, pray for me. I'm not sure. Thank you. Up and down. Someone else. Hey, here's my hand. I'm not sure of that. I'd like to be sure. I'd like to know that. I I would. Would you pray for me? If that's you, would you slip it up? Just say, hey, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Have you tasted the Lord? You've studied him, but have you tasted him? Is he real to you? Just somebody you read about in the book. Preacher, would you pray for me? I want... I want God to be real to me. I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. Is that you? I'm asking for your hand. Here's my hand, preacher. That I, I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. Is that you? Up and down, up and down. Preacher, that's me. I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. I know him. I know about him. Been reading his word a long time. Yeah, but have you tasted? Have you tasted? You just know all about it. I mean, has he really worked in you? Do you know he's good because you've tasted? Personally, for you, in you. You haven't raised your hand, but you want to, Pastor. That, that's me. That's me. God, speak. I need to taste and see that he's good. I, I need to keep reading, but, but, but seek. I want him to seek me. I want to ask him to seek. Find me and, and make himself real to me. And I won't forget what he said. Dear Father, work in these moments. Holy Spirit, this is all up to you. I know what you can do. Please work in us right now. In Jesus' name. Piano's playing. You're standing. Coming to the altar will help. You want to do it? Come on. Come on. 
If you want me to pray with you, I'll, I'll pray with you. God's speaking to your heart. I want to taste. Preacher, I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. I don't want to hear about him being good. I want to taste for myself that he's good. That he's good. God speak to you. Come on. Don't, don't, don't make an excuse. Leave your seat. Come to the altar. Talk to God about it. Talk to God about it. Don't excuse yourself. Don't talk yourself out of it. What's God saying to you? Taste and see. Taste and see. Say, I, I'm a deacon. I don't care. Taste and see that the Lord is good. See, I've been here a long time. I don't care. Taste and see. The Lord. I teach Sunday school. I don't care. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I say, I'm the preacher. You ought to say, I don't care. Do you taste and see that the Lord is good? As she plays, God speak to your heart. Hey, if he's speaking to your heart, that's not the devil. If, if God's telling you to come to this altar to take care of things, that's not the devil. He's, he don't want you to do anything for God. I'm going to pray. You're welcome to stay up here and pray and finish. You do what you need. Dear Father, please, for all of us, for all of us, if I could touch each one of us and pray over each one of us, I would pray, oh, that we could taste and see that the Lord is good. Not just say, I'm a Christian. I go to church. We know all the facts. But we don't taste. We don't experience God. We just read about what he did and who he is and what he did for others. I want him to do something in my life. And I hope everyone would pray that, that they would want him to seek them and do something in their life. And, and the writer said, Psalm 119, 176, and yeah, by the way, I don't forget what he said. But I need him. I need him to seek me. Thank you, Lord. Please work, God. Please, Holy Spirit, change us. Thank you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.